Have you ever seen a problem like this where we have some large number, i to the 79th, i to the 101st power, and we're supposed to find the value of that expression? And teacher says something about, yeah, it's related to dividing by four or mod four, and you're like, what is this person talking about? If we think about complex numbers in terms of the coordinate plane, our real axis moving left to right, and our imaginary axis moving up and down, we can get a better sense of what's going on with problems like i to the 79th power. Basically, what we're seeing in the complex plane is that we have a four-step cycle of possible powers of i. We start at one and we say, okay, if we multiply by our first power of i, that's just going to rotate the coordinate plane over to i itself. And so, of course, i to the first power is going to be equal to i. And then when we perform another multiplication by i, it's going to rotate the coordinate plane 90 degrees once more. And that's what we mean when we say that i squared is equal to negative one. But if we multiply by another i, that gives gives us the third power of i, which we can now see through another rotation, takes us over to negative i. So that's what we mean when we say that i to the third is equal to negative i. Finally, as we multiply one more time, we get that i to the fourth is going to be equal to one, and the important thing to recognize here is we're back where we started. So every other subsequent power of i is just going to follow this same pattern. i to the fifth is going to be i in the same way that i to the first was equal to i. i to the sixth is going to be negative one in the same way that i squared was equal to negative one. This is why your teacher talks to you about powers of i coming in some sort of cycle of fours or thinking of them in terms of mod four of the power itself. When I want to compute something like like i to the 79th, I only need to figure out where it fits in this cycle. I can tell that the cycle begins at one every single time when my exponent actually is a multiple of four. And then every number greater than a multiple of four by one is going to be equal to i. Every number with an exponent greater by two than a multiple of four is going to be negative one. Every number with an exponent three greater than some multiple of four is going to be equal to negative i. And again, that takes me back back to every multiple of four power, which is going to be equal to one. For i to the 79th specifically, all I need to figure out is that 79, when you divide it by four, leaves a remainder of three. And so this is the same thing as i to the third is the same thing as negative i. i to the 101st, if I divide 101 by four leaves a remainder of one, this must be the same thing as i to the first, that is, it's the same thing as i itself. Because divisibility by four actually only depends on the final two digits of the number, I don't even need to pay attention to the rest of the number. If I have i to some really large number ending in 22, that's the same thing as i to the 22nd, which has a remainder of two when we divide by four, so that's the same thing as i squared equals negative one. But it all goes back to this cycle which results from our geometric understanding of what precisely complex numbers are.